Hello, Monsters of Andrew, and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 and a brand new campaign as Teclis. My infinite knowledge is yours. Thank you, Teclis. That's really kind of you. So we're playing as Teclis because one of my mods suggested it, and it was quite hot. Yeah, the way he asked, very sexy, and I'm very suggestible. So that's the reason. Um, we've got a couple of mods running at the moment. We've got the Phoenix Court mod. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, it's really nice. And I've also got the Habitability mod. That's one of the reasons I'm actually playing Techlist, because otherwise you would have this entire design waste down here and uh, they would all hit your guts and they'd be constantly invading you and you'd have to basically counter invade them to shut them up. That's the only way you can deal with that. And I know there's a bunch of people that will go, yeah, but you, you shouldn't be able to invade the Chaos Waste because it's the Chaos Waste. But I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, but the problem is that the Empire had to deal with several grand invasions of Chaos, say, you know, generations apart. They didn't have to kick Archeon's shiny ass three times a week. He wasn't a Saturday morning cartoon villain that would turn up on a regular basis that you had to then foil his plans, did you? No, he, he turned up the once, well twice actually, depending on if you... The rep. I don't entirely know what happened with the retcon. One one time, Grimgor headbutted him. I can't remember if that was actually what happened or if they changed that. I I don't know. It's not important to be honest. The point is, the only way to deal with threats like chaos in Total War Warhammer Three, unless you want to just maintain an army to kick them out every two turns, which is what I have done in the past and I've hated it, is to basically invade. The only way to deal with threats in Total War Warhammer 3 is just to exterminate them. And frankly, that's a lot easier when you don't have to invade places that is, are going to give you massive debuffs for having to invade them. That feels like punishment that I don't want to deal with. So I've just got rid of it. So it's gone. And uh, that, that feels much better. So we've got Teclis. Indeed, and Teclis has his his trait is a preeminent mage, and as a preeminent mage, he gets more winds of magic power reserve, plus ten, very nice, and he gets a fireball. I mean, it, it's not the best, but it's it's something. I mean, you have to remember that he was a a Warhammer two, you know, starting faction, so therefore his mechanic is basically he he has a fireball. That's that's it. I think Skink. I think Skink Priest can get a fireball from a skill point. So basically, he's got the same thing as a Skink Priest, but he starts with it. He doesn't have to just use a skill point on it, and that's nice. It's good, you know. The best elf mage. It's like one skill point above a Skink Priest. So good. Anyway, so that's fun. And choose to live here. I, I yeah, Well, I don't have a choice, really, mate. I'm sorry. And. Oh, his, his faction mechanics are he gets diplomatic relations with men, high elves, wood elves, lizardmen, and dwarves. And that is because Teclis is the... He's the globe trop, tro, globe tropper elf? No, globe trotter elf. There we go. He goes he goes everywhere. Because you must remember that the high elves, they're effectively dark elves which aren't as into spikes. I, I wouldn't say there's a massive difference between them, really. There's just... there's There's the high elves. They kind of like more curvy... And then there's the Dark Elves. They like more spiky. That's the difference. Dark Elves are just goth High Elves. That's all there is. So the High Elves themselves are actually quite xenophobic. And Teclis is, is the sort of the, chi the slightly more chill elf. I mean, he's not chill, but he's sli comparatively, he's slightly more chill. Um, so as such, people like him more for some reason. Anyway, uh, we get allied recruitment costs because, you know, Globe Trotter Elf. Um, recruitment re rank for law masters of Hoeth, mages and archmages, because, you know, he's the wizard guy. We get recruitment cost reduction for sword masters of Hoeth and Phoenix units. It's recruitment cost. It's basically pointless. And we also get grandeur cost reduction for all white tower seats in the Phoenix courts. Fantastic. Now, we do start with a, a law master. We've got, we've, I've named him Obama. And he is fruitful, apparently. He is just bonking left, right and centre. Look at that face. That's a face that says, come to bed. He's got come to bed with me eyes. And that's why growth is not just increased in the local province, but literally everywhere. That's how fruitful he is. How exciting. And Teclis has a bunch of skills related to, you know, magic and shit, which is fine. Good. We'll worry about that later. Fine. We also get some Arcane Phoenix, which... Uh, yeah, 
That's nice. Uh, so the the more interesting thing is the Phoenix Quartz. This mechanic is a mod, and it is pretty great. I mean, just looking at the effort they've put into this, it's pretty fucking great. I really like it. The only problem I can see is the fact that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten elf factions, which means the the fighting over the seats is going to be vicious. Now, some factions get a cost reduction on different seats. I have already gone and picked the Grand Architect here, which is going to give us Rebuild Lost Splendor Edict. Now, Grand plus two Grandeur per turn, because I like the more Grandeur we have, the better. So that sounds good to me, so we'll do that. Once you take a seat, it costs more to unseat that seat. So it's going to cost someone 126 to go and grab that from us. Uh, some factions get reduction on some of the um, the seats. So for example, because we are techless, the White Tower seats are always 25% cheaper. For Tyrion, he gets the Council of Nobles, and Alario gets the Evercourt. And some factions of Elves uh, get different discounts on different seats. So for example, this one is a nautical seat, as you can see by the little, the little blue nautical bit there. So that means there are some factions that are nautical, and they will get 25% off all nautical seats. So that's how that works. So, you know, quite... I mean, really nice. It's just really well thought out, in my opinion. Really nice. Um, all the benefits are quite nice. So, for example, this one gives more Winds of Magic Power Reserve minimum and a Winds of Magic Power Reserve per turn, which is quite nice. As you comp as you acquire the seats, as once all seats are acquired, doesn't matter who has them, you don't have to acquire all the seats. It can be other factions as well. You'll get the bonus here, so the research rate. So everyone will get that research rate. All, all higher factions will get that research rate, which is really nice. And uh, once you've completed two of them, then the next rank will open up. And the next rank is obviously a little bit more potent and so on and so forth. So, really, really nice. Just, just, just good. Just, just a really nice, this is the reason why I think Total War Warhammer 3 needs a custodian team. Because it's stuff like this that you think, this, this wouldn't take long to implement. It works really well. This is the kind of shit CA should be doing. And they're not. And that's bad. Anyway, once you've, once you've reached the top, you can, of course, confederate different factions of High Elves. Assuming by that point they're still alive. Guess we'll see. In the meantime, uh, we do start in the Southern Wastes, of course, right at the tip with the Fortress of Dawn. We do have the Dawn's Harbour, which makes grandeur cost reduction for nautical seats. And there we go. I don't actually know how to make grandeur, so I uh, guess we better, guess we better start kicking, kicking some heads together, shouldn't we? Am I featherless? I do have some. I do have a. I do have a frozen turkey in my army, so there is that. We've also got a Tyranok chariot. Yay! You know me, a missile chariots, love them. Right. Well, let's start off with beating the ever living stuffing out of Sartorial, the Ever Watcher. It's got that brand new campaign battle smell. It smells like roast chicken. Quite a nasty army to face right off the bat because obviously you've got you know, a lot of change. You've got some screamers, some flamers. I mean, it's certainly certainly doable, but there's definitely easier first battles for old Teclis. A terrible start position. Especially because a lot of his expansion opportunities are actually like penned off with potentially friendly factions, and the one expansion opportunity he has is un uninhabitable terrain. Weird. Anywho, so we've got our turkey fighting their turkey. It's a turkey off. Meanwhile, the flamers are lighting up the poor old saw masters. They're getting absolutely rinsed there. But they'll be fine. We're sending some spearmen to go and hunt down the streamers of Zinch. And the chariots may actually prove to be useful as they move in to engage the Blue Horrors. The turkey off continues and it seems like we are winning that engagement somehow. Not entirely sure how a, uh, a frozen turkey wins against a Lord of Change, but never mind. The flamers get caught and destroyed by the Swordmasters of Hoeth and then the chariots move in to finish off the Blue Horrors. I do like chariots when they work. 
just it's just it's just it's a lot of micro to get them to work and they're just not useful a lot of the time they're very niche they're a niche unit and later on you need an army that can take on everything Tekalis doesn't really have the ability to do anything at the moment he's he's just sitting down there chilling throwing fireballs at people whenever he can I think our bolt thrower just twatted our own frozen turkey in the face with a bolt, but never mind. Sartorial is slowly getting dispatched there. He's losing quite badly. And the Screamers get picked off. Screamers actually have a lot of anti-large, uh, but generally they're not a great unit. Zinch has got a lot of good units, but Screamers... Screamers ain't one of them. Eat it, bird. I'm gonna take the mm, reflect. Demons. I wouldn't shackle demons. That just seems like a bad idea. Right, we're gonna start off with flock of doom, and you're gonna play with your sword, which I know you do very well because of all the growth that you give us. Oh, do I auto resolve this? Is it gonna sting? Probably. Eh, it could have been worse. What do we get? A lion standard. Melee attack, encourage. Okay, that's actually not bad. That's actually not bad. I'm going to pop that on you. And I'm just going to occupy it. There we go. We've got Dawn's Light already. Currently not at war with Kairos, are we? Nope, Kyr he doesn't like us. That's to be expected. Could go regrowth. Oh, chain lightning though. I think we're going to chain lightning. And I'm going to go with root marcher as well. That's what we're doing. We're going to give you blade master. Just make you make you more killy. And we're going to get some more archers, because that's what we do excel at. In two turns, we'll be able to get some Lothar and Seaguard, who are great. And we'll get military advancements one, because that's currently all we can get. The Phoenix comes to my yes, that's true. Can you give me some money? You're going to give me one? Take. You're going to give me one. Interesting. Is there anyone else who you 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 do like me? You do like me, and I could actually. If we're gonna have a chat with you, if I join your war against Clan Mordkin, who I figure well, no, where is Clan Mordkin? Are they down here? I mean, that might actually cause problems for me. But we could get a trade agreement. I mean, we'll, we'll probably be fine anyway. I'm just going to say we're going to be fine. We have 15. We spent 65. We get 10 a turn. Okay. I'm not entirely sure how we get more. That's the. Is there buildings that give us more? The is yes. Okay. Good to know. Right. Do we get uh, any. No. Grand you get okay, we get three for that. Okay, so so far it looks like you get three. It's influence. Can't see any grandeur there. Oh, grandeur there, plus two per turn for the public order building. Oh, and trinkets. Wait, what's okay, when control is over a hundred, we generate more income. It's only four fifty. It's not very much. But then we also get the elven trinket, so I guess we're we're good with trade as well. Unlike Bretonians, who literally just build farms and make all the money in the world for some reason. Ooh, win two battles against the Zinch, and we'll get the scroll of Hoth. Howeth? Hoth? Uth? Doesn't matter. And we win two battles against the Skaven. We'll get the Moon Staff of Lilith, which is going to give us Winds of Magic Power Reserve, Reduction Regrowth, and Upgraded and Miscast Base Chance. Fine. 
all very nice. So let's start off by getting reload time reduction. Wisdom awaits. And we'll also go and bop you command. before. I don't care for your orders. Well, oh, tough. Yeah. You're gonna have to look. It's gonna be a very long campaign if that's your attitude, you sir. Okay, so Thyra's Watchers are dead, and yeah, Clan Mighty Morbin Power Morbers is right over there. We could go and help Teclis out. Not Teclis, that I'm Teclis. Uh, Tyric, no, uh, the, the, the Lizard, the Krokgar, that's the one. <laughs> the Lizards, we're going up the Lizards. Poets chosen. Teclis, High Lawmaster. Uh, if we get Inspiring Presence... And you can have Blade Master. Now, did we, we do have Armor of the Stars. Armor of the Stars, it gives a Stalk unspottable. I mean, that may not be the worst thing for Tech. If it keeps Techless safe early on, that could actually be very good. So I might just keep that on here. We're going to start off with a little bit of extra growth, I think. And you know what I would like to do is maybe come down and grab this. Now, obviously, we're going to be at war with uh, Kairos fairly early on. He does start off at war with those Nurgle boys, so that will keep him a little bit occupied, but I'm not going to... Um... Oh yeah, grandeur per turn. Fantastic. I'm not going to assume that it will keep him busy for very long. We need to get our shit together. I don't know why we got plus one grandeur. Whether there was a reason for that, not 100% sure. Oh, this will give plus two influence and plus two grandeur per turn, plus construction cost reduction for all buildings, plus control. Lovely. You know what? I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going to not do that because it will be cheaper to do that. There we go. So we're getting grandeur. We're getting influence. It's all, it's all coming together now. Do we go and beat up some rats to help out? I think we do. I think we go and beat up some rats just to go and help Krokgar out. Because that'll get him on side. Getting Krokgar on side is never a bad choice. Uh, so, Zinch Corruption is dropping. A little bit of provincial instability, but that is dropping as well. That's going to be fine. We've got the growth coming along. We've got 101 growth at the moment. We're going to be able to upgrade next. So, nope, we're not going to be able to upgrade next turn. We could upgrade this next turn, which we might do, because the sooner we can get the harbour, the better, because that's more money. The then we can go and hit the caverns of Sotek, which I don't really want to do because it's going to be horrible rat city. And Ward Sieges, the replays desync at the moment, and I don't know why. And what's the other one? Oh yeah, it's so brown. It's so brown and it's always the same city. Choose to live here. You require assistance. It's not that bad. Leads me. Okay, if we move up there, grab some more of you guys. Because you're great. Uh, do I want to do this or do I want to... Um, if, if we wait, if we give it three turns, then we can upgrade to the Dawn's Hub, which is going to give us more money and more growth. And income from trade tariffs. That's all pretty nice. So I'm going to... I'm going to save. We're going to save our pennies. We're going to go into the Caverns of Sotek. If I take that, I imagine Krokgar will probably be very happy. So you guys like me. You, you're coming around. Anyone else? No, we don't. We don't, we don't know the or uh, so the or you're still fighting those guys, which is fine. It's keeping you busy. As long as it's keeping you busy, it means you're not going to declare war on me. Okay. Let's go and find out. It's rats. Uh, will I run away? No, okay, Ready. but I still got rats. So let's go and have a chat with you. If I join your war against... Cla Wait, I haven't met Clan Mordkin. Who the fuck are these guys then? 
Mordibus. Mord Mordidus? Mord oh, who? Are they different? What? <laughs> what? There's two. There's two mighty Morbing Skaven hanging around. What? What the hell? Right, what's going on in here? Oh, God. God, it's all kicking off. Look at this. It's all bloody kicking off. Uh, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So everyone's got a seat, which probably means that means they've all spent their grandeur, which is fine. Grants a random banner every four turns. I mean, that wouldn't be the worst one to have. I mean, we could try and use that, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not super into that. We are. We're, we're making. Oh, we're making six from commandment. Really? How are we making six from commandment? Is that in total? Per settlement? I don't know. Anyway. I guess we'll declare war on these guys. Um, I, pff, fine. I I didn't realise there was more Morbin going on, but apparently there was. So, neat. Take the caverns of Sotek. Does this have gold? This does have gold. Are you under siege? It looks like you're under siege. Oh no, it's just there's smoke. Dif different smoke. If you say so. I do say so. Okay, we're going to go with anything which makes you shoot faster. And you going to increase your speed. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Nope. We are saving. We're saving. I, I thought I thought Krokgar would be coming from the other side. I don't know where Krokgar starts there, doesn't he? So, is that... Which one's the capital? Temple of... What the fuck is that so wide? Why is the Temple of Avenue of Gold so wide? It's so thick! High law master of Hoeth. You require okay. assistance? Making camp. I mean if we can grab the Temple of Avenue of Gold, that would be amazing. My infinite knowledge is yours. That'd be super nice. Uh, I'm tempted to grab you guys. Is there a... Oh my goodness, there is one there. Nice. So, we've got one more turn. Then we can upgrade you, which is great. Kairos, uh, Kairo, are you still at war with anyone? You are still, Okay, good. You'll be busy for uh, a few more turns anyway. With any luck, that means we can grab the Temple Avenue of Gold. Maybe even Sotex Trail. Have that entire coastline to ourselves. How delightful. We don't have any of those. Well, no, that's not true. We actually do have... The chariots, but I'm not super invested there. We're going to go with uh, melee di naval discipline. God, the Lothar and Seagard, they're so good. Early on. Oh, just just the best boys. What we got? The folly of youth. A young prince, impetuous and unknowing of the ways of court, has flown in the face of order of precedence, speaking out against his elders publicly. Naturally, scandal has ensued. The Phoenix King is not required to wade into the hierarchical scuffles of the court, yet this prince shows promise. It would be unfortunate if he fell from grace due to his naive impropriety. So you get a court attendant. Grandeur. For all tier one seats. Okay. Ambush. Success chance. Plus ten. That's not bad. Reimburse the offended parties would give us a little bit of extra influence. Privately chide him would give us some... Allow him to be damned. A leadership reduction. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, I mean... Minus six leadership is effectively nothing, and I do like the grandeur. The court attendance, not bad. And I wouldn't mind the plus 20, but I'm kind of tempted to go with a... Other, so I'm gonna be able to allow him to be damned. Fuck it. And more importantly, him. Can we reach this? We can. Fantastic. It's going to be a horrible attack. It's gonna be a horrible settlement siege, isn't it? It's gonna be a horrible. I'm gonna hate it. Fuck my life. Ah, uh, uh, what have you got? Rotten rodents. Okay. Pus bags. Oh, delightful. Mad rat ogres. Rat spawns. Frothing wolf rats. Okay, well, there's definitely a theme going on here, isn't there? Arch Pontifex Stitch. Fine. Right. Well, this is going to be a settlement battle, isn't it? Oh, it's just 
bad on so many levels. All right. Unbelievably, this this battle did not desync. I've been having some serious issues with world settlements desyncing. It's been driving me absolutely insane. Like genuinely, it's it's consuming all. It lives rent free in my house and is currently squatting, not in a weird just living. It's rent. I guess that I guess that's living rent free unless. It wasn't invited, it just turned up. So yeah, it would be a squ Anyway, the point is that I don't like the fact that my battle's desync. I actually went onto Reddit and said, look, do, do you have you had any issues with this? Has, has anyone had any issues with World Siege's replays? The problem is, I think I might be one of the most prolific replay players in the world for Total War. I think that when it comes to Total War replays and single-player campaigns, if I don't watch the most, then I'm in the top five. So, when I, I... I had some responses to this, and most of them fell into a couple of categories. And I know that most of my, my audience are men, um, but I'm, I'm talking to the, to the ladies, all three of you. I now understand what mansplaining is like, and fuck my life is it irritating. I had people going, well, you know, the way replays work, none of them really actually are the actual replay. Most of them desync, like, no, they fucking don't. Don't talk bullshit to me. Right, you obviously have no fucking clue what you're talking about. In the other words, well, of course, you have to understand that the way replays actually display the results then there's going to be a certain level of of desynchronization any no no just no and the other one was of course if you're using mods no i said i wasn't using mods I think the internet was a bad idea, you know. I'm starting to think that maybe internet discourse may not be the way forward. I might be a visionary. I don't know. Anyway, the point is, I didn't get any help there. I was literally asking, could, could, you know, if you're playing a campaign, could, if you play a walled siege, could you just watch the replay? See if it, see if it desyncs. That's all I'm asking. That's all I see. It's a, it's a minor. I know I just had a bunch of people, some of them on the actual thread, a, a bunch of others slid them into my DMs to tell me that I didn't understand how replays worked. So fucking irritating. <laughs> so enraged. Oh my god. There was that. There was that um, video of that that um, woman who was doing doing the golf, and some some man tried to explain to her why she wasn't doing it well. And she was she was like one of the pros. She's she, she's won like championships and shit. I swear to God, if that was me, that man would be dead with a golf club wrapped around his neck. She was so nice to him. I would have throttled him with that fucking thing. Garrotted. Anyway, the point is... <laughs> so arrogant. Anyway, um, so we're, we're fighting... God, fucking... How... how right, th three... Three... Four minutes in, I've already just been wittering on about my annoying Reddit thread. Anyway, so... It is done. It has been done. We can... We underlined that. What we're not going to talk about it anymore. Anyway, so we're obviously we're we're laying siege to a city. The enemy have around about six thousand rats. I have around about one thousand four hundred elves. In I'm, I'm kind of a little bit outnumbered here, just several to one. Anyway, so what we need to do here, it's like four to one, isn't it? So what we need to do here is we need to get inside the city. This very brown with the green tint city. Look, I'm not saying that. This city doesn't look really cool. It does, right? Look at this. It looks very. This, this, it looks great. As a scheme of city, looks great. If only there was more than one, and maybe if it wasn't so fucking green all the time. Because the problem is that every scheme of city is like this. Every single one. 
Anywho. So we've got the rat spawn here. They're like chaos spawn, but rats, they're a molder monster. Unbreakable cause fear. Stats are fine. We've also got mad rat ogres. They are like normal rat ogres, but obviously have no hands. They're unfinished. It's an Edward Scissor Hands reference for you. You're welcome, kids. So meanwhile, we are trying to take out the enemy general. We are sprinkling the enemy liberally with some arrows. So far, so good. Trying to pick off the enemy general as well. So we're going to attack. I, I like attacking across this bridge. It's a nice choke point. Gives me some options. Especially when you have more shooties than the enemy army. And seeing as the Skaven don't really have shooties, that'll probably be most of the time. I just... The, the, you know what this map says to me? This was this was an early map design, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because there's a bunch of towers which are, un, which are like, invulnerable. Because they're built into the cliff. So, like, places like here, right? This tower here, indestructible. Indestructible because there's... And this wall here is indestructible as well, so you can't actually destroy it. And that... There's very few places in the rest of the game where that is the case. So... Th this feels like either it was, like, a... An... A, like a test siege, like an alpha siege, a beta siege, or alternatively, it was an afterthought. And considering how rushed Warhammer 3 felt, I suspect it might... Well, I don't know, it could have been it, but I, I'm wondering if maybe it was an afterthought. Anyway, the enemy general is uh, broken. He's the Arch Pontifex Stitch, and we are hunting him down. We've got Obama there. Is battering him in a, in a turkey, which is fine. This battle goes on for a little while as well, so if you're not comfy, go. Do, do you want? Do you want to just? Do you want a few minutes just to go and get a drink? Don't worry, I won't, nothing interesting will happen for the next few minutes. So if you're like, oh, I could really, or go for a pee. If you need, you know, if your if your bladder's feeling a little bit sloshy, that's a terrible thing to say. Why would I give you that mental image? But the point is that if you do need go, go, go now, right? I, I won't do anything for the next couple of minutes. It's fine. Don't worry. It, it's don't, I mean, it's, it's fine. All right? We're just going to do some shooting. Pontifex is running away. Nothing will happen. All right? Don't worry about it. So you, you just go. So how's everyone's week been? Good. But I'm not going to wait too long. Right, then it's, it's, this is not number two time. If they want to go for a shit, they do that on their own time. Right, this is a number. This is a number one. Not a number two. I will. <sighs> All right, probably, probably back now, aren't you? Right, so we've got Pontifex. I'm going to say nothing interesting is going to happen because it won't. Pontifex is. Uh, He's running, and for some reason, Obama and the frozen turkey are absolutely failing to kill him. For, I don't know why they're having such trouble. I concur. Thank you, Teclis. And <laughs> I feel like the archers are managing to do more damage to him than Ob Obama and the frozen turkey. I don't know whether they get, keep getting in each other's way or what the fuck's going on there, but he's got 161 health, and somehow he's giving them the slip. I wonder if it's because he's got a speed of 37, Obama's got 40, and I'm wondering if that's just not quite fast enough to, to get a swing in. I'm going to try it. We'll do it. So he's got 161. Obama's like, ooh, that was less than 60 hit points of damage. Well worth the Winds of Magic there. Worth every, every fucking Wind of Magic. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, guys. This is not hard. Come on, Obama. Do it. Hit him. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on. Come on. Do it. 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 Come on. For fuck's sake. Oh, thank for fuck. Yep. Good job. Well done. Oh, don't. Don't fucking grandstand. You do not deserve that. No fucking grandstanding from that. I was 
fucking useless. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have to cross the bridge. I was hoping they might come to us. They don't want to. They are just just blobbing all over the place. So we're going to have to send our boys across the bridge. Which I didn't really want to do, but needs must. I will say, the, I mean, the frozen turkey is actually pretty good. For one, it, it does quite a lot of damage. It's got good armor. It's got good melee attack, good melee defense, good weapon strength. 280 armor piercing, like fine. It gets more ward save if there's like high winds of magic. It causes terror. It also has a nice debuff aura. Like, it's, it, it just ticks a lot of boxes. The Fire Phoenix can go fuck itself, on the other hand. And the Arcane one, I'm not super invested in. But the Frozen Turkey, not bad. That's my, my Frozen Turkey review. Taking a little bit of fire there from the Puss Bags, who are... I oh, know they're, they're basically escaping. They're, they're test subjects, basically. A little bit of return fire there, or at least, well, we're actually shooting the rotten rodents, who are new plague monks. They're not quite plague monks, but now they're running through the pus bags and they're getting shot as well. So that's. That's a bit of a win. Meanwhile, we sent the frozen turkey to go and try and hunt down Krolk, who is the other enemy general. Obviously, we've taken out one enemy general. What about second enemy general? So at this point, I'm thinking, uh, we might we might actually have to like take the objectives. Very I don't often have to fight into a city. So, I mean I, I complain about the fact that most sieges are over by the point that you, you know, breach the wall effectively. Like by the time you've reached the first objective, it's basically over. And in fairness, this is true here too. But at least we had to go quite far into the city to, to get to it. So I guess that's something. But a lot of the siege maps are fucking huge. And I don't know why... I mean, especially this Gaver map where you have to go all the way around, right? You you have to go all the way around here. All the way... The, the chance of you having to fight your way... To the victory location is so so limited so so infrequent that it's barely worth the effort i know they built larger cities because people complained about the warhammer 1 and 2 cities but i'll be honest i think the warhammer 1 and 2 cities were fine i had some pretty good sieges now I, I still remember one as the i think it was playing as flat we were defending Drakenhof against, I think, I think there was at least three orc armies and two wars there. And it was a, an absolutely apocalyptic battle. And I still keep that in my mind as like a really, a really just fun siege. Like it was back and forth, we were losing sections of the city and then pushing back. It was just generally really fun. If all sieges were like that, then... Sieges would be good. Unfortunately, most sieges tend to be just against the garrison, and that tends to be quite boring. Especially when you get things like attacking Kislev, and uh, Tsarina Katarine decides to book it instead of, like, hold the city. She could stand and fight, or alternatively, she could run away and let you just kill the garrison without any without any real issue, and uh, she decides to run. Which, strategically, maybe it's the best option, but, you know, you'd think that the Tsarina would have a particular desire to, to defend Kislev against all comers, and instead she just, like, runs the first sign of trouble. The enemy general is... He's afraid. He's afraid. They are. They are indeed. So the Swordmasters are going to hack their way through these rotten rodents, of course. Their stats are ludicrously good. I really like the Swordmasters. We should definitely get more of them. The Rangers, on the other hand, suck. So we are going to 
finish off Kralk before he can do more Plague Breath. Is that what it is? Pestilent Breath. Dislike the Pestilent Breath. We are pushing across the bridge because it's, it's become apparent that we're going to have to push into the city to acquire victory. We need the victory because if this city falls, then we should be able to mop up and then we'll get another another province. We can do another thingy majig, you know, the thing with the commandment. That's the one. We can do another commandment and then the commandment will mean that we get more grandeur. The system works. This feels like a trap. It's a trap. Our cruisers cannot withstand firepower of that magnitude. I know I said this in another video, but my uh, my kid is super into Star Wars at the moment for some reason. Don't know why. He gets these little fads, but he's he's super. In, he was it was Moana last week. He was super into that. He could sing all of the songs, and now so can I because I had to listen to them so often. Um, but this this week he's super into. Star Wars. Um, unfortunately, his brush with Moana does mean that he just believes that all movies must be musicals. So he's slightly confused with the fact that no one breaks into singing in Star Wars. He keeps asking, where are the songs? And I keep asking, so there aren't really. But then he goes to um, Alexa and asks for the Chewbacca song. And it turns out there is indeed a Chewbacca song. And... He then said, see, Daddy, there is. And I was like, well, that's a fair point. I didn't realise there was a Chewbacca song, but apparently, <laughs> apparently there is. If you go to Alexa and say, Alexa, give me the Chewbacca song, you will find out that there is a Chewbacca song. I didn't know it existed. It does. And I was wrong. And my four-year-old was right. So I've had to live with that. So there we go. Chewbacca song. Meanwhile, the sword bosses are continuing to hack their way through ooh, the enemy general over there who actually has pestilent regeneration. I don't know where they've got that from, but apparently they've got it and it's giving them quite a lot of regeneration, although they're still losing quite a lot of health because the sword masters are hacking through them at a rate of knots. Looking at the damage dealt as gold, 12,000. Nope, that's, that's 1,200. Uh, there we are, 1,000, almost 300. Which, considering they're fighting mostly clan rats and scaven slaves, is very impressive. Just hacking their way through. And the Tyranoc chariots have actually also done fairly well, uh, racking up 124 kills there. The rangers also... Well, no, they're not doing so well. It's fine. But the Lothar and Seagull, on the other hand, are uh, these guys. And then, even when they run out of, of ammo, they can just charge straight into the rear. Well, the Lothar and Seagull remind me of, uh, if you've ever played Total War Charlemagne, and the uh, the nomadic faction, they're not nomadic faction, but the, the faction that started in the far east of the map. Their, their basic unit was like a spearman archer, which I think is one of the few times, it, I think it's one of the first like hybrid units they ever, they ever really yes. had. But at this point, the, the enemy cavalry did not know how to deal with this. They just assumed that they were archers, which was a mistake. So the e endless hours of fun, just lining up my archers, shooting shooting the enemy as they advance, and then the cavalry would charge into me and die horribly, thanks to the fact that, you know, I was spears. But they really did not know. They just they just thought, that's nah, archers, this is going to be easy, no problem. Take them out. Easy peasy. Job done. It was not. It was not. Right, so we need to smash our way through the barricade. We've taken this objective over here. We're going to move our archers up to cover our flank because taking an objective really annoys the AI. They desperately try to retake it with everything they've got. So they're going to throw a lot of units at us. Obama is moving in to help out. Take out those pus bags, assuming he can work out how to use his sword. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. There we go. Got some more rangers there as well. We've moved some archers up to give a little bit of support, although most of them don't have any arrows left. But, oh well, one unit does. It's run out of arrows. Two of them still have arrows, so that's, that's something. And we've got some more spearmen moving in to help as well. To be honest, I feel like spearmen may be better than the rangers. I think, I mean, the silver and guard are very good. 
Silver and Garner are a nightmare to deal with because they just sit there and tank forever. Going to take down this barricade. Already the frozen turkey is just rampaging through what few Skaven remain. Because looking at numbers, we can see they've dropped down to under 2,000 rats. Which, considering they had uh, 6,000 leveled at us, not great. Chariots charging into this little blob. Actually, again, just exceeding my expectations, but still quite niche. So um, they're pretty good here because the enemy doesn't have any cavalry or monsters left over. If they did, then the chariots would not be very effective. And unfortunately, it just means they're really good against infantry. There's a whole bunch of other units that are good at in killing infantry, and you may as well take those instead. Like, why would you take chariots when you could take dragon princes? I bet you the chariots are probably cheaper, but still, dragon princes are just more useful in more places. Even silver helms. So we hold down the enemy there, and we are through the barricade. Although that's sort of immaterial, considering the enemy has broken, the army has fled, and the city is ours. Okay, here's a shout out, right? If you have a campaign that's going at the moment, modded or not, I don't care. If you fight a siege, can you just save the replay? And then, can you watch the replay and see if it desyncs? The, wall, the walled settlement battles. Everything else seems fine. It's the walled settlement battles. I don't know why. I think, I think basically, I might be the person who watches campaign replays the most in the world. Because I have asked so many people. And they just don't seem to bother. And I... I've, I've asked CA. I can get nothing from them. No response whatsoever. It's driving me mad. It's actually driving me insane. Wow, we got a lot of... Uh, how did we get... Have we just, just been ticking up? Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. Well, that was a siege. Ready. Require assistance. I'm assuming that won't work. Uh, increase cooldowns, replenishment hit points, maybe. I'm, you know what, I'm going to get Sublime Focus. I'm going to get Greater Arcane Conjure because that spell, no, it's not a spell, that ability is great. We're going to give you that one and I'm going to make you hard to hit. Okay. Well, yeah, you'd be alright. It'd be alright. Okay, let's upgrade you. So, yeah. just, just just any any walled siege. You just happen to fight one. Just think, oh yeah, monsters of Baron asked me to save that. Save it, watch it, watch it at high speed. Doesn't matter. Right, just watch it, remember what happened, and if some if something goes completely randomly wrong with it and it desyncs, in fact, if you look in your if you look in your the creative assembly folder in the Warhammer 3 folder, there'll be logs, there'll be a desync log. If your replay desyncs, that log will be filled. So just, just do that. For my sanity. Techless. What's fucking left of it anyway? Oof. Anywho. It's not that bad. Chill out. Right, you ran away with very little help. If we can get Sotex Trail, that'll be a second province under our belt. That would be great. Ho ho ho! You like the bad things we're doing to those guys, which is great. I could actually join you against against Cloud Mordkin, uh, seen as that seems to be you there. Could I do could do that just just to make you like me? Don't you want me, Krokgar? Don't you want me? Oh, oh. I was working as the high mage of the White Tower. The of the White Tower. When I met you. Okay, where the fuck did you go, little rats? The war crown of Safari has gone missing, mighty has sorcerer. It? Okay. An artifact of such incredible power yeah. cannot Okay, back in your box, you creepy old bastard. It's miles away! 
Also, I don't know where that little shit went. I'm assuming he legged it back towards... He didn't ambush. I heard him underway. So he's definitely underway. But where the fuck has he gone? I'm assuming he's gone this way. My steps are guided. Oh, there he is. Onward. Uh oh. Um, no. I mean, even Wait, if we get ambushed, we should be okay. He says. Right, getting a gold mine would be delightful because that's oodles of money. Are you still fighting? Please still be fighting. You are still fighting. Lovely. With any luck, Oxyoth will be along in a minute to kick the ever-living shit out of you. We have the second rank, so we could potentially do something about this. Uh, not just yet. What could we get? So we could get influence per turn, winds of magic cost for overcast spells and miscast base chance. That's fine. Experience per turn for lords and nobles. Martial rivalry for dwarf units, allied recruitment. We don't have any of those yet. Um, experience game for archmages and law masters of Hoeth. I mean, that's fine. Tribute from vassals, 20%. Income from faction capital settlement, 20%. Tribute to the Phoenix King grants an additional two grandeur per turn. I mean, we could potentially grab one of these off them, but... Um, don't really need that. Eagle that are during forest battles. Missile resistance for the... For turkeys. Okay. I mean, influence per turn wouldn't be the worst thing. I do quite like the Winds of Magic Powers are plus one per turn, though. If you say so. I do. Not enough warpstone. <laughs> I mean, even if you do ambush us. Even if you do ambush us, it's going to be rough for you. Because you've mostly got Skaven Slaves. You do have those four characters, which are potentially quite nasty. However, I think Obama can probably deal with them. Looks like... Uh-oh. We've run out of time. I, Lawmaster. Are they there? Did they run away? Who knows? Who knows? Hmm. Well, they're not there. That's interesting. Well, Kralk is, but where's the other army? We've had a little bit of menace from below trouble, but uh, so the AI does tend to just throw them throw them at you. Doesn't really think it through, does it? It's more annoying than anything else. Throwing some fireballs at Krulk. Trying to take him down a peg or two. Boop. Gotta hate that. <laughs> He's gotta hate that. Oh, there's the, the old creamy waterfalls in the background. Uh, is it? There we go. Look how creamy they look. It looks viscous, doesn't it? That's the problem with these waterfalls. It's not just... It looks like a creamy white waterfall. Mmm. Lovely clotted cream. So, the enemy army is spreading itself out wide. Not necessarily the best idea. This army is mostly clan rats and skaven slaves, so... Is not going to be too much of a problem. And pus bags, of course. Life of pus bag is short and unpleasant, much like the pus bags themselves, but the plague monks have to test their maladies on someone. Surprise, they ask. Right, continuing to take fireballs to the face. And whatever that is. Of course, now the Skaven are moving into range of our archers, which means it's pain time. 
little flock of doom as well, just to tickle him. How many kills has Tekka's racked up? I mean, it's not amazing, but it's something. Then comes the old lightning dude, what's it? Again, being a vortex, it's going to be... Yeah. It's fine. Meanwhile, the frozen turkey has chased down Kralk, the plague pontifex, and it's knocking him over. Some more rats moving to try to save their boss. The main problem with Skaven is the fact they do tend to run away. So they'll run away, rally, and then come back again. And the last thing you want is to be spread all over the map, fighting little little units of Skaven all over the place. So, keeping a nice, strong front line. Filling them full of arrows. They run away. They rally. They come back. You fill them with more arrows. Rinse and repeat until they run away for good. I don't really know how I feel about the Rangers. I would personally just prefer Lothurn. Just an entire stack of Lothurn Sea Guard is pretty good. More electrical vortexes helping out the old frozen turkey. I mean, he's got 56 kills. It's not bad. Mostly just trying to deal with the with the enemy general. Pick him off. Chariots coming around for a little charge into the flank of this horde of Skaven spears and uh, Skaven slaves. However, it does. It feels like the the spearmen seem to can probably win that eventually. Just the chariots are helping. I'm just gave and fled and have now rallied once again. They love doing that. Still, our losses are incredibly min. I think we've lost like five guys. Most of our losses were from, from before this battle, from the siege. And we have slowly, slowly replenished them. We're not full, we're not up to full strength yet. So I think actually they've killed about five guys uh, because I think probably in this engagement here, so we're not chariots. You know what? They're not they're not doing bad. They're not they're not doing too bad. They're not doing great, but they're not doing bad. I could give them that. And the Skaven army finally decides to rout for good. Okay, well I still don't know where that other army's gone. However, I'm assuming... Wait, did we actually have... Oh, there you are. You just went to go and hide in the mountains, did you? Okay, well that's... Slightly irritating, but not the end of the world. I can live with that. Uh, more speeds. That is. Granger cost for white. I mean, it's minus 5%. It might help us get another one. So let's do that. How many do we have? One, three, five, and we're gaining. Okay, so we could actually steal one of these. I do, mm, I do quite like the Winds of, Man <coughs> Winds of Magic Power Reserve. That's quite nice. I don't really care about this. Random enchanted item, talisman, or arcane item every four turns. Oh, I'm kind of tempted. It's not a huge. I mean, we could just start grabbing this one. We, we do we do live next to Liz I don't know why it's martial rivalry uh, oh martial purpose for for Lisbon units okay I mean it's not the worst we could save one turn can we I'm not super worried about that income from ports would be quite nice.
Hmm. Unleash the winds. Power recharge rate is plus 320. We get more reserves. Decreased cooldowns. Miscast base chances increase. It also affects the enemy. And then target range plus 2% of spells for each white tower seat claimed in the White Phoenix Court. Interesting. Rally citizen militia. Plus one influence per turn. Hero action cost minus 2 for each ever caught seat and grandeur gained per turn Ooh. in fact is there any other grandeur gained by turn so that's grove woodland okay that's not that useful random banner income from entertainment buildings oh and grandeur per turn if maybe we save for that one because i feel like the more grandeur we get the more stuff we get okay you however are a problem now i'm assuming you don't have anywhere to live anymore Master. Uh, no. I'm assuming you don't have a peace treat either. No, you do not. Uh, the only benefit there is that while you can while you can certainly threaten all three settlements, we have captured them, so it means just bopping you and taking them back. Um, we could potentially get an agreement there, but that's going to cost us all our money, and to be honest, I'm not super into that. Um, who are you at war with? Uh, if, I, if I join you in on that, and do that. That's going to be 3,000, which is slightly better. I mean, still ludicrously expensive, Krokgar. You complete bastard. But I will take it. And I will... Uh, do you want to upgrade doors like? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And then we've got commandment here, so we're going to go with the rebuild lost splendor, so we can get even more thingy majigs. Ah, yes, of course. Where can you... I can't tell if that's where you... I, don't, I think you can go slightly further. But I don't think you'll be able to ambush us. You're probably going to go for that kind of so tech. We just need to take it back. To be honest, as long as we've got the, tavern, uh, the Temple Avenue of Gold, that's the main thing, because that's, that's given us the big... Hello? Hello? Oh, what a caravan. I was worried you'd, like, landed then. But no, we're fine. Oh, we don't think we can. Oh, do we get. Oh, we got a powerful magic item. Oh, I definitely want to do that. Splurge! We got a chest of sustenance. Very nice. A gilded horn. Gives us a little vortex there. We got winged boots for diamond guardian phoenix. Physical resistance for literally everyone. Oh, I do like the upkeep reduction, though. Mmm. Wing boots is fine. Gilded horn is nice. This is very tempting. Like 10% physical resistance for everyone. Because you can see it's 10% physical resistance. The effect range is infinite and duration is infinite. So basically it's everyone. It basically just gives everyone in your army 10% physical resistance. Oh, I'm going to go for the chest. You seek knowledge. I'm going to go for the chest. Uh, what do we have? Potion of Strength. We don't need a Potion of Strength. We don't need a Potion of Strength. We'll give you that one. Do you want a Scroll of Power? You can have a Scroll of Power. There we go. Right, you're probably going to go for the Cavern of Sotek, which is fine. I mean, that probably will cause a rebellion, which is a slight problem, but it's only very slight. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, Spear Wall would help. Let's go with that. We just need to get this. We need to, need to sort this out as quickly as possible because Kairos will be gunning for us almost immediately. I can friggin' guarantee it. I know what he's like. I know what he's like. Yep. Well, A strong leader is me. It's kind of to be expected. My only concern now is they're going to start running around, like, staying away from me, and it's going to take me bloody ages to track them down and finally put them out of their misery. Meanwhile, I'm going to have rebellions. The caravan arriving is nice, though. Oeth grants you wisdom. Uh, I could go for the ambush, because this is going to be a rebellion, isn't it? 
yeah, well, fairly soon anyway. Maybe they'll go for the Temple Avenue of Gold now. I just If they go for Torso Pins, that's going to be so irritating. I've got to go and chase after them. I'm hoping they'll be heading this way. And hopefully, don't spot me. Uh, do I upgrade that? No, just enough chance they do come in this direction, I guess. I mean, I could put I could put guys down here. I could get a guy, couldn't I? We could get like a law of a law of beasts, a law of beasts. We couldn't get we could uh, peaky no thinker research rate minus three percent grandeur. Ooh, uh, yeah, go on. High elven you hop in there, recruit a couple of them, and with any luck. High elven Spear because it is the best spell in the game. Let's do something like that. With any luck, they'll go. Oh no! I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure the AI knows exactly where everything is all the time. I know they pretend they can't, but I'm fairly sure that given the choice between a completely undefended settlement and one with some units in it, they'll probably decide to go for the completely undefended one, even if technically they wouldn't be able to see it. Nope. You're heading that way, are you? I that bring Azurian's fire. Is a problem. High Lawmaster of Hoeth. However, I can take this, which will give you attrition. That's right, two can play at this game. So you could march towards it, but you're taking attrition now. Well, the garrison here is not great. Uh, I can... How much are you? 170, so we're going to go into our overdraft. Vexingly. At least we can get that one, so that's a little bit more ammo. We've got the gold mine. This is going to rebel, even if the military presence is there. Very distressing. Never mind. Uh, we want to go with... <sighs> Entertainment. And we'll give us a little bit of money. It's not a huge amount of money. Too well. let's, let's go with that. We'll go with, we'll go with the pure cash. The most Just need to... Hump you. I mean, you're, you're, the, the problem is these guys. I don't really have much that can kill characters. That's the main issue. I'm hoping that maybe they'll turn around and come back at me. Because I'm the closest settlement, so I'm hoping they turn around and attack. Because otherwise they're, they're going to take another turn of attrition. We can try and hunt them down. That's the plan anyway. And we can get our commandment back. There we go. Lovely stuff. Right, so we could actually get one of these. I could... I mean, it's it is more relations with lizard men. A little bit of culture. Everyone loves a bit of culture. Is there anything here that's going to be like more money? Wine trade resource. Oh, we were going to get. We were looking at. Um, yes, this one. Two grandeur per. I'm going to grab that one. Because again, the more the more grandeur we have per turn, the better, right? So if we grab everything that gives us more grandeur. Trained by the white. We can get more seats, which is more bonuses. But that is going to have to wait until next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.